have the pen. It's probably better off for all of us if that's the case because I, I have horrible the pen. penmanship. Today we also want to talk about how do you name assets. Very quick, easy. Um, this is a uh, we've got ch charts in the room, etc. If you have an anion that ends. Um, in the IDE ending, then it becomes a hydro something ic acid. If the anion ends in an eight, it becomes an ic acid. This is in your chart. If it ends in I, it's an us acid. And if it's a per eight, it's an ic per ic acid. Now, technically, this last one doesn't need to be listed because that's like an eight becomes an ic. Correct. Eight becomes ic. Eight becomes us. Eid becomes hydro ic. So let's just so make up an acid. Form a conga line in your room there. And there and HClO4. Eight becomes ic. Eight becomes us. Now, I acids. Hydro ic. Acids always have what, Mr. Sanders? Uh, acids uh, always have a hydrogen ion in there. Well, for our purposes now, all acids have a hydrogen ion in there. H positive. H positive. Not just H, but H positive. Hydrogen ion. So you, you basically, you could see this is hydrogen plus this polyion, and this polyion's name is? That is uh, perchlorate. Oh, it's perchlorate. Yeah, it has not CLO4. Chlorate. Now, watch that, folks. So it's perchlorate, but it ends in 8. And if it ends in 8, it becomes a? Ick. Ick. So we're going to call this um, nope. uh, per, sorry, chlor, chlor ick, ick acid. You've got to acid. add the acid. It's kind of like, folks, the word acid connects is the hydrogen piece. Yep. And the perchloric is what the, what the ClO4 becomes when it becomes the acid. Correct. That, we're just naming the ion, giving it a new suffix, and throwing the word acid in there, indicating that it's paired up with the hydrogen. About this one now. So HBr, okay. Well, the Br that is the Br minus ion, which is called bromide, and H becomes ic, it becomes us, ide becomes hydro ic, meaning hydro brom ic, and then we put the word acid at the end. So hydrobromic acid. A couple so more we should do. Uh, um, HNO2. Perfect. HNO2. Okay, NO2 is the nitrite. Ion, H becomes ic, it becomes us. So instead of nitrite, we have nitrus, and we end it with acid because it has the H in front. The nitrus acid is the hydrogen here. Acid. The nitrite becomes the us business down here. Okay, that was quick. I think you guys are good at that. Yep. We're going to move on to some balancing of chemical equations. Yeehaw. Yes, we must balance equations. Because Why do we balance equations, Mr. Zen? Well, there's this nifty little thing called the law of conservation of matter, sometimes called law of conservation of mass. Basically, what it says is what, however many atoms you have on the left side of the equation, you have to have the same number of atoms on the right side of the equation. So if I have six carbons on the left, I need six carbons on the right. If I have any number of any element on the left, I have to have the exact same number of that element on the right side of the arrow. Now the key on this, ladies and gentlemen, actually there's kind of tricks on balancing some of these. Mm -hmm. This is a combustion reaction. Think of that last year, combustion. You have a, a carbon, hydrogen, oxygen compound here turning into carbon dioxide and water. And my rule on these is the Cho2 rule. You balance the carbons first, then the hydrogens, then the oxygens, and then if necessary, then you double it. So we're going to balance the carbons first. I always start on the left. There are six carbons on this side. And so on this carbon, there are no carbons, so I need to put a six here. So now I have satisfied the carbon. Actually, when you put the six here, you are by definition putting a one here. At some point, you might need to double that, but we're not going to do that now. Now, if I look at the hydrogen number, there are 12 of them, 12 hydrogens. There's no hydrogens in this oxygen, so I need to make what here? Uh, if you put a 6 there, 6 times the 2 that are already there is yeah, 12 six times two hydrogens. Is 12. So now I've gotten my hydrogen, you know, check mark on each. Now I'm going to do my oxygen last. Oxygens are sometimes a little weird. That's why we leave them for last. Never try to do them first. Or How many oxygens? Mess everything up. It's almost actually better. We have oxygens here, but we only have one more space to fill right here in front of the O2. Let's so we need the to other add up first. the oxygens yeah. on this side. So from the CO2, you have six, car six CO2s. Each CO2 has two O's. So there are 12 oxygens in carbon dioxide. It's not 120. 12 O's. And in the water, it's 6 times 1, so that's plus 6. So we have a total of 18 oxygens, right? So what needs to go now? We already have 6 there so in that big O compound. Six, so 18 minus 6, of course, is 12. That leaves us 12. We need to balance with the O2. So what times 2 is 12? There it is. There we go. Okay. Uh, we have Easy another way. example that we can go back to that's on your sheet here. We might be able to do this one right on the screen. I think so. 
You have uh, you have H2 plus O2 makes water. Now, one thing I always tell people, Mr. Bergman, is always start with the most complicated compound, the there thing that go. has the most stuff in it, and, and go from there. That the looks like water. the H2O to me on this one. He has two hydrogens, and I look over here, hydrogen, I'm a happy camper, and over here I have one oxygen, and here I have two. Okay, so now, we're going to have two. By the way, two. would this be correct, Mr. Sorry. Sam? Sure. All right, let me, What's I don't that? agree with you. Right. H2 plus O2 makes H2O. That should be makes an arrow. arrow. Here we go. I knew that. H2O. Why don't I just put a 2 here? I'd be good. Okay, right? well, we can't do that. When we balance equations, we only put the numbers in front because if you put a little 2 there at the end, what you have done is you have just uh, changed the compound. It's no longer H2O water. It's now H2O2 hydrogen peroxide. So this 2 has Big to go away. Big difference. H2O necessary for life. H2O2 very strong oxidizer and will not do good things to you if you drink it. All right, so it's a whole different... You cannot whole change another ball the game. compound, ladies and gentlemen. You can only change the number in front. What's the number in front called? The coefficient. The coefficient. So uh, to make the oxygens balance, I need to put a 2 here yep. to get the oxygens. That's going to lock in that oxygen at a 1. You don't have to put that there, but sometimes it's nice. Mm -hmm. But that kind of screwed up my pretty hydrogen. I had t two hydrogens. Now I have four hydrogens right here. And so I'm going to need to put a 2 here, and that makes the 4, and that's the answer. All righty. So that's not a terribly difficult one. we got a couple of more, and I think we'll be done for this particular podcast if we can ever go back to the previous slide. Oh, yeah, and back too far. Let's try slide. that. There, there we, we go. go. Hydrogen plus nitrogen makes ammonia. I'm just going to just do it this way. Hydrogen plus nitrogen, that's, these are two gases, makes ammonia. You know that smelly stuff? Mm, that's I kind of like it, actually. But then again, I like the smell of skunk, so that, I don't you know. You are sick. I know. What can I say? You're the one that plays harm with kazoo. Hey! No <laughs> ducks! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Where's so. Where's shotgun when you need it? All right. All right. Uh, all right, what do I need to do here? I got a problem. The most complex compound is ammonia, it looks like to me, Mr. Sams. What yep. do we do here? Well, I, let's look at the hydrogens. There are three of them. And, uh, okay, well, and then there's nitrogens. Looks like there's two of them over there. So, I, if we kind of follow our, our Cho 2 rule, I guess we could call it the NHO 2 rule. And, uh, let's do the nitrogens first. Nitrogen little. first it is. We've got one on this side, right? Mm -hmm. One nitrogen here. And over here I've got two nitrogens, so of mm -hmm. course I've got to increase this side. That gives me two of those. That's going to lock this nitrogen into one. Yep. And that does to my hydrogen over here, two times three, that'd be six hydrogens. Mm -hmm. And so to make that correct, I'm going to have to put a three. Here. Now, um, just as a little side note, we've done, we, Mr. Bergman and I have balanced hundreds and thousands and bazillions of equations in our time as chemistry people. Um, eventually you just kind of, you just kind of, intuitively work your way through these problems. You're going to have to wrestle with some of these. Do these in pencil because you're going to end up erasing things a lot. Okay, very rarely do you just kind of know it. Okay, it j you really have to work through them. So, um, we have some announcements. Hey, we'll even pause it. We are back live. Well, maybe not live. I don't know. Watching this later. I guess it is, yeah. Something like that. You know, I hit that little privacy button on the wall and it didn't turn off the intercom. Yeah, we were I hoping guess that to be work. private. But we're not private. Oh, wow. We're public. All right, so anyhow, this is an example of one you might have to wrestle with a little bit. You don't... Uh, there... If you look, the, there's odd number of oxygens on the left. There's an even number of oxygens on the right. Anytime there's odds and evens, it takes a little work. Mr. Bergman's just doodling there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, where would you start on this one, Mr. Bergman? Uh, now, the I'm asking you The most complex compound in my mind would be NO2. I can just that say looks, that looks, be, yeah, it looks pretty so complex So, I got one me. in, and I've got one in. So, I got one in and one in. I'm a happy man. I got two O's here, and I got... Uh, three. Three O's. That's hmm. a problem. Not 30. Three O's, oxygen. Okay, what do I do? All right, hmm. well, I've got a double sum kind of a number. Yep. And one thing I like to note here is that because of the one in here and the one he in here, whatever I do to the N on one side or the NO2 and the NO, I must do the same. And so in this case, I like to double things. So if I were to yep. put a 2 here and a 2 here, because that keeps my ends, the in two numbers in front of the ends must be consistent. Yeah, and just as a side note, if you ever get stuck and don't quite know what to do, yes. stick a 2 in front of something. Yeah. I often yeah. I'll just stick a 2 in front of the very first compound right or sometimes with the most complex compound just to see if it works. You just got to mess with it. So what do I do now? Well... Uh, looks like we've got two nitrogens. Let's count our oxygens. We've got, okay, we've got uh, four, four on the right. On this side, i got four oxygens. On this side, i got two times one. That's two plus two more. Two hey, more. look at that. There's hey, four there's oxygens. Four. We got it. So, so just by sticking a two in front of one of them, yeah. we got it worked out itself. So if you ever get stuck and don't quite know where, where to start, stick a two in front of something. Give it a shot. Oh, more kazoos. All right. I think Mr. Bergman might need to find... 
another instrument to suit his liking. All right, folks. Well, that's uh, 2.1 today. Uh, next time we'll see you in 2.2. Uh, and uh, we'll see you in class. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>